Hey, seventh graders, if you're listening, you should hear a rainstorm going on in my classroom right now. We're going to listen to the storm to kind of help us set the mood. So while we're reading today, maybe your teachers could turn on about 10 minutes of listening to a thunderstorm just to help us set the mood or tone, because that's what today is all about. I'll see you back in 10 minutes. Enjoy those books. Welcome back, 7th graders. I hope you enjoyed the time reading your books and really getting into them. Today, like I said, it's all about mood. So let's get started. We're going to get started doing a quick that's me. So for every statement that I say aloud, if it's true for you, just do a quick that's me out loud in class. Here we go. Number one. Went, <clears throat> sorry, you went trick-or-treating this year. If that's you, that's me. Number two, you've watched a paranormal show like Ghost Hunters. That's me. Number three, you've watched a scary movie. That's me. Number four, if you have ever played a deadly video game. That's not me. <laughs> Number five, have been freaked out while babysitting or while home alone. That's me. So today, all these feelings that come from these experiences are going to help us to really relate and create and understand mood. Let's get into what mood is. All right, I'm going to have you go to Google Classroom right now and open up where it says mood writing. So go ahead and find that and open up mood writing. I'll see you back as soon as everybody's there. You'll be looking at a document that looks like this. It says lesson, creating mood. And the first question is, what is mood? All right, so what is mood? And I'm not talking about your moody brother or sister. What is mood? So I want you to take just a couple minutes and generate what you think mood is. So when you're thinking about mood in a story, all right, so talk amongst somebody in your crew, you know, maybe just do a quick turn and talk and generate down what do you think mood is? And you're gonna record that right inside this document. What is mood? So go ahead and just jot down what you think mood is. See you back in a minute. Teachers, go ahead and pause. And when most students have had a chance to complete this, go ahead and start the video. All right, well, maybe you shared out some responses on what is mood. So most of you probably came up with something along the lines that mood is the feeling that the reader gets. So the writer sets that up and they do different things when they're doing a mood. So right here, now tell me, why do you think mood is important in a story? Why would it be important? What, what's the big deal about having a mood in a story. Go ahead and share um, a couple answers and just jot down a few thoughts. All right, so why is mood important? That feeling that a reader would get from the story? Well, because it enhances the experience. It can um, leave you on the edge of your seat. So mood is important for a variety of reasons. Let's take a look at a couple reasons right here. And feel free to jot and add to your notes from what you see right here. So why mood's important? It creates that feeling, that atmosphere. It sets the stage for future actions or events. So you know what's going to happen when it gets dark or when that music starts to play. It can be used for foreshadowing and for suspense. It gives us some different ideas about the characters or settings. When things change, you then know kind of who the bad guy might be or who's in trouble. It definitely entices the reader. It heightens the experience. If all of a sudden everything goes completely still and completely quiet, the mood has changed and we are waiting to see what's going to happen next. All right, so mood is really important. Today, we're gonna play around with mood. Scroll on down where it says elements of mood I notice in clip one and clip two. I'm gonna play these clips for you. And what I want you to do is I want you to jot down the elements that are creating the mood in these clips. So what is it that's creating this mood? And today we're really looking for a fearful, scary mood. All right. And so I'm going to play this and I and just want you to jot down some things that help to create that fearful, tense mood. 
teachers to help enhance the mood of your classroom feel free to turn off all the lights and just watch this video have students three-quarter their screens too as they watch just this short clip I could have at least driven myself, Dad. I don't want you driving home alone this far so late at night. Wow. You must be Jill. We were so thrilled to find a babysitter at the last minute. Come on, I'll show you around. Your house is amazing. Thank you. Anything else? Where are the children? First bedroom at the top of the landing. Just make yourself at home. So looking right here, what are some things that the author, the author, that this video clip did to set the mood? Take just a couple of minutes and jot down some things that help to set the mood or tone for it to be scary. Go ahead and pause, give students a few minutes and then. All right. For this one, you might've said she's isolated. If you, did, if you noticed her dad was dropping her off, so she doesn't have a car and dad even says, um, being up there so late at night all by yourself. That has some deep music that has kind of the deep tone to it. She's in the woods and, and the house is surrounded by water. And that phone call, and of course the jump scare at the beginning, and the fact that she's in this enormous home. So all of these things help to set the mood or the tone. And let's add in here too that it's nighttime. All of those help to set a scary or creepy mood or tone. All right, let's watch clip two and do the same thing for clip two. Again, teachers, it's kind of fun to turn off those lights and just watch this clip. Students, you can three quarter your screen. And once the clip is done, record down what did they do to set a scary, creepy tone or mood. All right, I need to mention, keep it quiet so you can hear it. So looking at both of those clips, now looking at this clip, jot down some things that they did with this video game to set a mood to make it scary and creepy. All right, so take just a minute and record some down. Maybe share some out inside your crew. All right, so some things you might have put on here is that it's nighttime. 
and there's that creepy music. You might also put in the crunching sound of when they're walking. It might also put in the breathing sound. So those sounds really make a difference. The, the sounds of the kids playing on the playground, but yet there's no kids there. Um, the spotlight, so you can only see what's right in front of you and it's darkness everywhere else that you look around. So, and that they're, they're alone and it's at night and those creepy signs that keep coming up that say run. So um, all of those things help to add to the mood or the tone. They help to create a mood or tone. And a lot of us really enjoy those scary moods and those scary tones that are put in. So let's keep going with our um, with our examples here. So this time I'm going to share some mentor texts with you, and I want you to tell me what what did they do to really set the mood here. What what did they do? All right. So mood, movies, video games, and TV they can manipulate your viewers through music, through color, through sound, through visual effects. We see it all the time. Good writers they manipulate with words. Your pulse quickens. You laugh out loud, or you even cry. So let's look at these mentor texts. Okay, I'm just going to read you a little bit, and I just want you to write down what do those authors use to help set or create their mood. Now, mood isn't always scary, like the ones we just looked at. Although those ones are a lot of fun and they're lots of fun to write. Um, but some moods are peaceful. Some mood, moods are very um, upbeat. And then some moods are very sad or creepy. So let's hear this one. This is the highwayman. And so I'm just going to read to you and just tell me what did they do to help set the mood? The wind was a torn of darkness among the gusty trees. The moon was a ghostly galleon tossed upon the cloudy seas. The road was a ribbon of moonlight over the purple moor. And the highwayman came riding, riding, riding. The highwayman came riding up to the old inn door. So now, what I just read to you, what are some techniques that they did that um, our author, Alfred Noyes, did to set the mood? Well, he did the weather. So he had the weather in here and the and it was dark. It was at night. And there's nobody else around. And we're going up to that old inn. And you can hear it riding. Even in, later on in the story when it goes to lot, to lot, to lot, you can hear the horse hoofs. So that helps to set the mood or the tone. All right, let's try another one. Let's look at after 20 years. So I'm going to go to that one next. All right, after 20 years, let's listen to how it starts off. It says the policeman on the beat moved up the avenue impressively. The impressiveness was habitual and not for show, for spectators were few. The time was barely 10 o'clock at night, but chilly gusts of wind with a taste of rain in them had well nigh depeopled the streets. Hmm, well, We've got a little bit of rain and it's evening. And it says it's de-peopled, so there's not very many people around. So he's kind of got more of that alone. So those are the things that they're doing to set the mood or the tone. Let's take a look at Amigo Brothers. And Amigo Brothers is a little bit different because this time we're going to look at the mood or the tone that's being set on the day of the fight. All right, listen to this. Bong, bong, bong. The roar turned to stillness. Ladies and gentlemen, senores y senoras. The announcer spoke slowly, pleased at his bilingual efforts. Now, the moment we have all been waiting for. The main event between two fine young Puerto Rican fighters, products of our Lower East Side. So what did they use to set the mood or tone here? Well, they had the ringing of the bell. So they had that sound, bong, bong, bong. So that helps to set the mood or tone. And it adds in an excitement as we get in there. And then we have the announcer with his upbeat tone. So all of these things help to set the mood. And so that's what we're going to be focused in on as we have to write our own moods. All right, scroll down till you get to this chart right here that says creating mood, because this is what you're going to work on from now until the end of the hour. Let's take a look at creating mood. Go ahead and three quarter your screen so you can follow along with what it is that we need to be doing. 
So looking up here, this is a writer's secret. Good writers often start their stories with mood. They open up with mood. They did that in The Highwayman. They did that in After 20 Years. You see that in many stories. So let's remember that mood is that atmosphere or it's that feeling that you get. Mood establishes the setting. It paints that picture with words. And with mood, a reader is led to a place and discovers how it feels to be there. When I read Harry Potter and I was reading about Diagon Alley, I felt like I was right there and I could picture everything. So good writers use mood. So today you're going to write your own mood. This is an example from a student. And by the time we're done, you're going to write one very similar. This student chose to write a mood that was scary, a little bit fearful, and a little bit mysterious. Silence. Nothing could be heard on that windy October morning. Nothing could fix what happened on that horrible morning. The eerie silence could make anyone standing in the forbidden forest uncomfortable. The wind howled as the freezing ra rain began to fall. The crows flew away knowing what was going to happen that morning. That morning that would turn our world upside down. That morning that our nightmares would become a reality. This writer created a mood. This gave us a feeling, an eeriness, and it also makes us want to continue to read. This is what a lot of great writers do. I even noticed some repetition happening in here. I know what the wind is doing. I know what it feels like outside. I know what it sounds like. So I have a sounds like, what it feels like. I can even see what's going on with the animals here. This is what a good mood would look like. Let's continue on. Now that you've seen an example of a student fearful mood writing piece, just to kind of give you an idea of where you're gonna end with this piece, I want you to decide what kind of mood do you wanna write? Lots of us love to write the scary fearful moods. They're, they're so much fun. You might even decide to do more of a mysterious mood. Some people wanna do a peaceful mood. So maybe that's what you're gonna go for. And some people, they might want to do a happy, upbeat mood. So things that help you think of if you want to do a mood of fear is thinking of like Halloween nights. Those picturing a Halloween night, that might help you to come up with a fearful mood. Same with being home alone or babysitting or camping or haunted houses, even ding-dong ditching. Those, the, what was going on in the setting, what you heard, what you saw, the time of day, all of those things help to create the mood. What you're going to do right now is you're going to look at your chart that you have in front of you and you're going to decide for your own mood what words are going to go in your chart today your job is to fill your chart so thinking of your mood it what's the weather going to do is it chilly is it icy is it bitter or is it warm is it sunny is it a sun-kissed day some colors that need to go into your mood because good writers show those colors. Is it gray and smoke in color? Or is it bright, sunny yellow? For your mood, what, what are the trees gonna do? What's the wind gonna do? What are the shadows gonna do? Get some actions in there, some action words. Um, then go on to the onomatopoeias. Just like when we saw the Slender Man one, we heard the crunch, crunch, crunch. What are we hearing? Are we hearing the screech? Are we hearing a clank? What are we hearing? Try and do the senses. Put in some words for senses. What are you hearing? What are you feeling? What are you tasting? What are you smelling? And some inner thought. What you've got to be wondering. Could it be that the wild wind was trying to warn me? Add in some actions of the animals, like the one we looked at, the crows knew what was going on. Are the animals hiding or are they coming out? Are the dolphins um, popping out of the water to greet you or are all of them cowering in fear? Personification. This is huge in mood. It makes a huge impact. So are the shadows following you? Is the wind warning you? What what can you bring to life? So your job right now is to think of your mood and to add in as many things as you can for just your mood. It's going to be a, a, a very solid piece 
that describes and gives us a feeling. So your job right now is to fill in your chart. You do have some resources that you can use inside Google Classroom to help you with this. Let me show you where they're at. Inside Google Classroom, where it says word choice help sheets, it's been a long time since you've used those. They're in here and they're gonna give you the things that you would need. Some great adjectives for sensory detail, some action verbs that you could add in, and some physical traits, maybe the things that the animals are, are doing or the way that they look. So these are gonna be some great resources to go and find those fireballs because you want this full of fireballs. All right, your job today, only to fill in your mood chart right here because then what we're gonna do is we'll take this mood chart to help us actually write our moods. All right, have fun, fill in your charts, and we'll see you back tomorrow. Teachers, if it's helpful, go ahead and keep this chart up while students are working. So I'll bring it to right here, so that way you have that up for students to look at while they're filling in their charts.